Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about different hip mobility drills to help you with your sumo depth. The hip joint is basically an articulation between your femur and your acetabulum on your hip. It has movement in different planes of motion, six to be specific, including hip abduction, adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, hip flexion, and hip extension. So it's known as a ball and socket or synovial joint, and it has a lot of motion. Now, because of our lifestyle, it's usually a joint in which people experience a lot of restrictions and therefore it makes the execution of the sumo deadlift increasingly difficult. Two particular motions are important when it comes to the sumo deadlift, and that's your hip abduction and hip external rotation. Not only for the proper execution of the lift, because essentially the closer that you can have your, have your hips to the bar, the closer you can have your hips to the, your center of gravity into the bar, the easier and more efficient the movement is gonna be. The second reason why is because having better mobility, specifically external rotation, will save you a lot of trouble when it comes to hamstring injuries, for example. Because once you lack motion in one joint, specifically in the hip, if you don't have uh, enough hip external rotation, the torque is gonna start coming from the hip and specifically placing more <coughs> stress or tension in your hamstring tendons that attach on your tibia. So you want most of the external rotation moment to be coming from the hip and not from the tibia, so you can avoid hamstring injuries as well. So basically, <coughs> My warm-up for the sumo deadlift includes three parts. I first started with a dynamic component, then I move into a static component, and then it gets more into a movement-specific component. So the first part of it, the first movement that I'm gonna show you is a Bulgarian split squat with reach. And what's great about this exercise is that not only you'll be um, focusing on generating equal amount of muscle contraction from each leg, but you'll also get a nice and deep stretch in the front of your hip. So you're basically gonna assume the same position that you would when you're doing a Bulgarian split squat, but you're gonna do this movement for quality, not for quantity or for weight. So all you're gonna do is drop down to the bottom of the, of the split squat and reach towards the opposite side so you get a nice deep stretch on the hip flexor of the leg that's behind you and on the opposite side, your QL on the opposite side. So this movement, you want to repeat it. You want to do two sets of 10 to 12 repetitions. And remember, do it for quality, focus on the stretch. It's not about how many you do or, or weight or anything like that. It's just about feeling the stretch and opening up your hips as much as possible. The next movement that I'm gonna walk you guys through is a half kneeling rock back. You want to just start on a kneeling position and extend one of your legs out so that you can get a stretch on the adductor of that leg. And while you extend your hips forward, you'll also feel the stretch on the front of your hip. Now, same concept here as the Bulgarian split squat. You just wanna do this for the stretch. Um, do the reps slow, two sets of 10 to 12 repetitions. Now, one common mistake that people make is only focusing on passive stretch when you're trying to increase your range of motion in a particular movement or a particular lift. And so, you have to understand that the flexibility of your muscles is not only dependent, uh, or it's not dependent on the actual muscle fibers itself, but it's also controlled by your central nervous system. So essentially, you wanna open up the potential range of motion that's available through a static stretch or a dynamic stretch like the one we did, but now we also want to um, solidify it through taking our joint through that range of motion too, so we can strengthen the newly found range of motion. The next one is a hip 9090. This is a personal favorite. It feels really, really nice on the hips. And it also is a great assessment tool to see the discrepancies that you might have between hips, especially uh, in internal rotation. So it's very common for people to have uneven mobility in one hip versus the other. You can fix it as simple as just adding this exercise into your routine. Do it every day uh, because it really doesn't cost you anything and you can only benefit from it. So for this exercise, you want to put your legs, your feet straight right in front of you. And then all you're going to do from there is you're going to drop both knees to the ground on one side. You're going to hold that position there and then you're going to reverse it and do it on the other side. You're going to repeat that again, two sets or three sets of five to six reps on each side. Now we move into um, a little bit more exercises that are a little bit more specific 
for the sumo deadlift. So now that we've increased our range of motion in our adductors and in increased lubricated our joint and increased the flexibility all around in that um, ball and socket joint that we were talking about, now we can move into more specific exercises. So when it comes to the sumo deadlift, the first the first thing that we notice is that we need a great deal, a great amount of adductor flexibility, but we also need to be able to hold that position via activating our hip abductors. So this following exercise that I'm gonna show you is specifically for that. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna lay down on your back, you're gonna hook on a band to your knee, you're gonna take a step away from the rack so that there's tension in the band and the band is pulling your knee inward. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna do two to three sets of 10 reps where you're just pulling that band out, squeezing your glute, holding that for a few seconds, and coming back down. The final exercise is a goblet squat with a sumo stance, with a sumo stance, and that's just gonna look like exactly what it sounds. You're gonna hold that dumbbell in front of you, squeeze, I like to squeeze it with my elbows to generate more tension in my core as well. Same exact stance that you would choose for a sumo deadlift, and then just drop down as low as as low as you can within your limits, as long as it feels comfortable. Don't push past a point of pain and then just come back up. And you wanna do that two sets of 10 reps. The nice thing about that movement in particular is that it activates your core, so it gets your core nice and ready for the sumo deadlifts, but it also works to open up your hips even further and prepare them for the movement that you're gonna do. Whatever movement that you're doing, it has to follow that progression of more general to specific, the goal of a warm up is to make you feel better prepared for the movement that you're gonna do. So I usually start, depending on the exercise that I'm doing, whether it's a squat, a bench, a deadlift, a snatch, or a clean and jerk, uh, I always start my, my warm ups general with a dynamic warm up just to uh, increase my core body temperature. And then I move um, closer and closer, more specific to the exercise, depending on uh, what restrictions I personally need to work on. So don't feel like, um, this is a rule and this is the only thing that you should be working on because again, uh, you need to make sure that your warm-ups are individualized just um, depending, on, depending on where your restrictions are and make sure that you're targeting exactly what you need and you're not just doing things for the sake of doing things. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you have any more specific questions about this topic, feel free to drop it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to each one of you and remember, and catch you guys next time.